Graham. Uh, General Bostic, you sure you want this job? <laughs> Senator, I'm sure. <laughs> well, you know, what Senator McCaskill is saying has got a lot of truth to it that we need to spend taxpayer dollars wisely with some kind of plan, but uh, I've been here for about an hour, and you've been asked about 35 specific things that people would like you to do before you get confirmed, which makes me believe that we seem to know our states better than maybe uh, other people do, because I don't know about this thing you blew up. She wants you to build it back. I just I assume she knows what she's talking about, I, and I would support it. I don't know. Is that an earmark to... To rebuild something you blew up? No, to fix, <laughs> to fix what was blown up by them okay. is not an earmark, especially oh. when they made a commitment to do so. Okay. All when right. they blew it up. All right. So <clears throat> the point is that we're trying to fix a, a, an old problem with a new way of doing business, and I just feel for you. Uh, the Panama Canal is going to be widened in 2014. Is that correct, General Bostic? Sir, I understand that it will be widened. In and the ships on the sea today are going to be about replaced by ships almost three times their size. Is that correct? I understand that to be true, Senator. So if you widen the Panama Canal and these super cargo ships can come directly to the East Coast, that means we have to look at our infrastructure on the East Coast anew. Is that correct? Senator, I'd say we have to look at our infrastructure across the country. Do we have a plan to deal with the widening of the Panama Canal and how it would affect uh, infrastructure in the nation to make sure we can export our products to the market? Is there a national vision to deal with uh, the changes in shipping? Is there an administration plan or a congressional plan that you know of? Sir, I'm, I can't answer whether there is or is not a plan. Well, I can tell you there's not. And that reflects badly on us all. So to my colleagues, shipping as we know it's about to change. Earmarking is a very parochial endeavor that doesn't allow you to look beyond your local interest. But if you just withdraw from the game and your port, like Charleston, gets no money in the budget and you think it should be considered based on a merit-based system, what do you do? So I would just say you've been beat up a lot, but I'm going to beat up myself and my colleagues we have absolutely no vision as a nation to how to deal with a change in shipping. That's just one infrastructure change. So I would suggest that we all sit down with this administration and come up with a game plan and say, what does it mean if the ships are going to be three times the size they are today coming through the Panama Canal? What does it mean to the Mississippi River? Do you have to widen the Mississippi River because you can have more barge traffic? Can every port on the East Coast go to 50 feet, which is the minimum requirement? to service these ships 24-7, and if every port can't, who says no? And if you're not lucky enough to get in the president's budget, what are you supposed to do? Go home to your people and say, sorry, we just lost, can't help you? I just don't think these are good responses to real problems. Uh, the Great Lakes, if it's the largest shoreline in the nation, somebody should come up. How do you deal with the largest shoreline in the nation? How does it fit into the change in and, and export opportunity. The president says he wants to double exports in the next five years. Count me in. How the hell do you get your products to the market? What do you do when shipping changes? Does it affect transportation? Does it mean you got to have more roads for trucks? So there is no vision in this country. And I pledge you, General Bostic, not just to complain, but to sit down and work with you to come up with a merit-based system that would allow the Congress and the administration in a collaborative fashion to get ahead of what is going to be a major change in our economy, rather than just talking about how bad earmarks are and how dirty the Congress is. Uh, I want to do a little more than that. I want to actually bring a solution. So if you don't like earmarking and you think it is corrupting and there's a case to be made, what have you done to fix it? What have you done to solve the problem of a world changing and America being left behind? Have you ever been to the Shanghai port, General Bostic? Senator, I have not. You need to go and go visit our ports and see the difference. So I enjoyed talking to you. <laughs> and to be continued. Now, the Charleston port, you're familiar with that, right? Senator, I am. They tell me it's going to take to 2024 to get the harbor deepened to accept these new cargo ships if funding stays the same. Is that okay with you? 
Senator, I have not seen the plan, but it seems like an awfully long time. You know why I think it's an awfully long time to go from 45 to 50 feet? It takes three, it's three times longer than it took to build the Panama Canal itself. I mean, we built the Panama Canal shorter than it would take us to go from 45 to 50 feet in the Port of Charleston. So we've got a lot to talk about in the Port of Charleston. You have been great to help us get into the work plan, and it's just not the Port of Charleston, it's the Port of Savannah. We're going to sit down and talk about a merit-based system, and I need your input, and I need my colleagues to do more than complain about the old system. If you want merit-based decisions, we need to come up with a system that gets us there. And I'm willing to help anybody to get there, Republican, Democratic, Libertarian, Vegetarian. <clears throat> now, uh, Admiral, are you familiar with sequestration plans of the Congress? I didn't hear the question, Senator. Are you familiar with the plan of the Congress regarding sequestration? Uh, I am uh, generally familiar with the, the law and what, what it would entail. Well, how do you feel about it? Well, I believe the Secretary of Defense has, uh, and has properly articulated that it would be devastating. Uh, that devastating, dumb, we'd be shooting ourselves in the head, it'd be a Navy without ships, without sailors, brigades without bullets, air wings without trained pilots. Do you agree with that assessment? Uh, I agree with that assessment. Do you have any idea why we continue to want to go down that road? I mean, I don't, I'm just asking you. Uh, I don't have an opinion. So you're, you're going to be the head of the Pacific Command, and you're telling the members of this committee that if we execute sequestration on top of the $487 billion that we're already trying to cut, we will be devastating the United States Navy's capability to defend this nation? Uh, I would say it's a, not just the Navy, but across all the... So we'd be devastating our military. Thank you for your candid testimony, because uh, I couldn't agree with you more. Now, China, that's your theater of operations, right? Is China engaged in a sustained effort of cyber attacks against this country's defense infrastructure? Is the People Liberation Army engaged in cyber attacks against this country? Uh, Senator, I don't have uh, direct uh, knowledge that I would share in this forum about uh, the... It's widely believed they are. If, if, would you agree with this, and this will be my last question, if the People Liberation Army of China is engaged in cyber attacks against this country to steal our defense infrastructure, our trade secrets, our national security information, would you consider such activity if it did occur a hostile act against the United States? And would we be, uh, would it be legitimate for, under, for us under the law of war to respond in kind? I don't want to be speculating whether I would uh, to give you a legal opinion at this point in time. <clears throat> well, forget that about that from a military commander's point of view. If our nation is being attacked in a cyber fashion against our defense infrastructure, uh, do you consider that a hostile act as a military commander? Uh, yes, sir. I cer certainly an act uh, against the best interests of uh, the, our Can you our get national back national with me about whether or not you consider it a hostile act and whether or not we have the right to respond in kind and whether or not we should? Um, Senator, I would uh, say certainly the activity is hostile. Whether it fits in the category you can of get a, back an exact hostile act, I need to, get, to give you a legal opinion on that because there, okay. as you know, there are legalities the way we would have to, in warfare, right. uh, that we would have to categorize that. But uh, certainly it, it tends in that direction. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Grant.